Hello, my name is Ashley and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a spooky video because this is going to be going up on Halloween. This story that I'm about to tell you was one of like the scariest times. Like I can't believe that we experienced this. This dealt with my friend. I'm not going to like say her name because there's some stuff involved in the story that she didn't want linked to her. So I'm just going to be using a different name. So yeah, I'm going to be telling you about the time that my friend got possessed. This happened around this time last year, so like October last year. The story is so long and there's so many different parts to it. This is probably going to be a long video, but I'm going to try to make it concise and still like get the full effect from it. Around this time last year, the people that we were hanging out with, they were fun to be around. They were a lot of fun to be around. But they weren't the kind of crowd that we really should have been associated with, both her and I. This crowd, one guy in particular, they were all about like drugs and doing drugs all the time. And maybe that's not really how it is, but that's just what it seemed like. And it was just sketchy. We shouldn't have hung out with them at all. But I feel like I didn't get sucked into it as much as she did. Which is why I'm wondering if this is why this happened to her. Backtrack to a month to a few weeks before she got possessed. We'll just call her Jill because her and this other guy were like Jack and Jill. They were like this. They were really, really close. Jack and Jill. Jack, Jill, and then a few of their other friends wanted to do acid. It's good that they didn't end up doing acid because of what happened later on in the night. They decided on just getting really, really high. If you don't know much about weed, I feel like, I, I don't know, I don't smoke weed, I should just say that. I just like know about it from people around me and stuff, which I guess can say something about me. There is a wax form of THC, which is, THC is what gets you high. There's a wax form of that that you can just straight smoke and it'll get you super, super high and it's called dabs. Jack and Jill and their other friend, she didn't really smoke weed that much. They decided to have her smoke a lot just to see, like, so that she would have fun. So they wanted to get her, like, really, really high, and she did end up getting really high. And then they noticed later on in the night that she was acting really weird. I don't remember exactly what they were saying since it was, like, a year ago, and they just had told me this story. But they said that she was screaming, screaming at the top of her lungs and wouldn't stop. And it was like outside in the middle of the night, so she shouldn't have been screaming. She was just like literally like crawling around. And at first they said that they thought it was like funny because they were like, oh, she's just too high. Like maybe she's just acting weird. Maybe she like just can't handle it or whatever. Said that like when they looked at her, like that was not the same girl. That her eyes were just like blank they were kind of like um is she possessed the next day jill had messaged me and said that she had accidentally locked her keys inside of her car and that she needed a, a ride home so we went to their house and they proceeded to tell us all of this and we were just like oh my gosh like that's so crazy so me my boyfriend jack and jill were just like sitting talking about the night before they had also talked I remember about I think it was something about like getting a hornet like a bee high that night and they thought that that was so funny we were kind of like joking about it and whenever we were talking about it the light in the room that we were in it kept like flickering which it there was no reason for it to flicker it wasn't like storming or anything like that it was like clear as day and it kept flickering and we we're like um that's really strange yeah me and my boyfriend ended up leaving going home going about our day all of us and then whenever me and my boyfriend got back to our apartment that day we found it doesn't sound like a big deal but we found like a dead hornet at the bottom of our steps whenever we were just laughing and joking about like that hornet from them and like being scared about things being possessed or being people being possessed So when we saw that, we were kind of like, Something, something's off. Something's not right. It was just different and it, something wasn't right.
in between the weeks of that happening and Jill being possessed, Jill sort of just stopped talking to me. I don't think she meant to, but slowly just like kept trailing off. Like I would text her and then I would have to text another time and another time before she would answer. I remember me, we had all made plans for me, Jill, and one of our other friends that we hadn't seen in a while to all meet up. So I went there and we, me, I met my other friend and Jill didn't tell us that she wasn't coming and she just never showed up. Which is like fine, there's no hard feelings or anything now. But it was just weird for how excited she was when she was talking about it. Throughout the few weeks also, she had kind of stopped com becoming motivated to do things. If we would make plans to hang out or if I would be like, hey, do you want to hang out? She'd just be like, no, like I kind of just want to stay here. Like I don't, I don't want to leave or just no answer at all. And she had stopped going to work and she was going to school at the time. She stopped going to school. This whole time she was staying with her boyfriend at the time. He lived with his friends. And the house that they lived in was an old farmhouse. And I usually don't get too weirded out by old farmhouses because I like grew up in one. So to me, it's just another house. But with this guy's house and with the house that he lived in before this, you never just really wanted to be by yourself in the house. It was always like eerily quiet. It just felt off. That's like the only way I can describe this entire time is just something was off but none none of us knew what yet also she was like smoking more and doing more drugs and stuff like that like thinking back on it, i'm like that was not my friend like i don't know who that was which is so scary to think about because she could have been in the process of getting possessed this whole time and probably was in this house that she was staying in was the old farmhouse she never wanted to leave i remember her telling me like after the fact that Anytime she wanted to leave, she just felt like she was floating around or that like her heart was literally like broken that she had to leave specifically like her boyfriend's room. We had gone to this guy's house a lot of times. Like we had had like went to parties there and stuff. There was like a back closet room. It was like a tiny room and beforehand, before all this happened, it was kind of just shut off. Like nobody ever really went to that side of the house. Not for any particular reason, just that it was just like a closed door. There was no need for us to go into it. But once um, her boyfriend had moved into this house and they started staying in that room, that's when things started getting really, really weird. Like I said, I hadn't really talked to her at all. The thing had happened where she didn't come to meet with our other friend. And I saw a text this one morning from her that said, hey, I just got possessed. <laughs> I was kind of like, what do you mean? What do you mean you got possessed? I didn't say that to her, but like, that's what I thought. I was like, what do you mean? But the story she had told me about her getting possessed was that the whole day she felt like really weird. She didn't feel like how she normally did. She kept scratching her boyfriend and she didn't even mean to, like that would just happen. She texted me again and she was like, oh my gosh, I just sneezed this many times. And I've heard that that's a sign of like a spirit trying to escape your body. And I was kind of skeptical at the time. I was like, maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe they just got like too high and something weird happened. She told me that they were all smoking in this area and she, ended up blacking out and she told me that she like looked at her phone she's like what is this like she couldn't recognize her phone she didn't know what it was and she was blacked out but she had somehow flipped a table that was in front of all of them and wasn't responding to anything that they were saying she was like unconscious but things were still happening with her body and she said before this happened she was still with Jack, but Jack wasn't her boyfriend. It's like this confusing ordeal, kind of. She told Jack at one point, like before any of this had happened, she's like, can you go get like my boyfriend? I, I feel really weird. Something feels weird. And then that had ended up happening later on in the night. And she said that all of a sudden, somehow she just like snapped out of it. She didn't know why everybody was staring at her. And then they told her after the fact, that's when she had texted me. So a few days later, it was like, 
hey do you want to hang out because like i said i hadn't seen her for a long time for like a good month or so she still wasn't leaving this house but these like episodes of her blacking out and doing stuff that she doesn't remember like it's not like she was doing like yeah they smoked a lot of weed and stuff but it's not like she was doing a drug to where she would become unconscious how if you drink too much alcohol you black out like it wasn't anything like that like it was something completely different whenever i had asked her if she wanted to hang out she said there was a priest that was coming to the house to kind of cleanse it even if it wasn't her being possessed they just wanted to clean cleanse the house to kind of just get rid of anything bad that was happening just in case and she would just sleep all the time talking about this now i realize that it sounds kind of like she may have just been depressed or something but i really I don't think that was the case considering that like she would have these episodes where things would happen. She told me that the priests were like immediately kind of taken aback and they didn't feel good in the area and when they went back to the particular room that they had envisioned like somebody lying dead like on the bed as an overdose like they had died because of an overdose i don't know exactly how they would know that if they were just priests i don't think that they're necessarily like psychics or um people who could see the dead but that's what they saw and it kind of linked up because she just kept doing more and more and more and like wouldn't stop kind of like how a like drug addict would i'm not saying this to be mean to her at all like i feel bad but she kind of took it in her mind as okay i need to stop i need to settle down because that could happen to me whenever the owner of the house whenever he found out that they had blessed the house he was automatically like livid he was so mad and was yelling at them about having somebody come without his permission i guess yeah that was a whole ordeal and then also something weird that happened in this time as well was that the landlord of the house, his wife or something, had a stroke and died randomly in this like time frame, which seems so weird to link up with the whole possession thing happening. There was so much going on. She would wake up with scratches on her face and just like scratches on her body, which was really concerning. So the priest ended up saying, don't come back to this house you can't stay here because obviously something not good is here and you just want to be safe and out of harm's way so don't come here and at this time i think that her and her boyfriend were going on a break because of this because he was freaked out because of it and all this stuff and she was like crying she's like i can't go back she wanted to go back so bad she was literally heartbroken because she had to stay away from that place that's like furthermore proof to me because like i don't know if you're a spirit you're obviously stuck in one place and so i don't know it just made sense which leads to us like hanging out so it was me my boyfriend jack and jill once again and this was like around the time when the priest came like a few days after all this had happened i don't think that i'm like a very religious person but the whole like demon thing and everything really freaks me out because i don't know you don't really necessarily think that it's real until it happens close to you so her coming to the house i was like um we need to put a bible here 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 like i literally had like three bibles all throughout the house to i don't know just like feel protected i guess and i'm not even like that religious with like bibles and stuff i don't know how to explain it i was like nervous but i was excited to see her they both came to the house automatically like you could just tell that she like just looked drained like she was not the same person from like a few months before and then we all decided to go out to dinner the whole time i don't know she was just quiet like we were talking and joking and stuff but still in the back of my mind i'm like is she gonna have one of these episodes now what do we do if something does happen i was just kind of weary about it after we had finished eating and stuff, we came back to our apartment and that's when things started getting a little weird. I don't know, they were just like joking about it. I don't know if Jack was trying to like freak me out on purpose, but I had like gotten a cold chill or something. And then he's like, that's how it starts. That's like, you're really gonna be next. But taking it as a joke and seeing how distressed jill was over this whole entire thing happening like it made me so mad that he would like claiming to be like one of her best friends like they were literally like glue like that just didn't seem right to for him to kind of like make fun of the situation 
he had like taken her phone or something and wouldn't give it back now, i feel like usually she would just be like okay fine whatever like she wouldn't like she would be mad about it but like kind of joke about it i don't know how to explain that in this case she automatically started screaming at him to, whenever he wouldn't give her phone back she jumped across the couch at him which is something she never never would have done i don't think like she literally like jumped across the couch to get her phone and like hurt him i it looked like which after that happened we were all kind of sitting there like what do we need to do what do we what's next this sounds so mean but like in my in the back of my mind i was like okay like let's you guys can go back home now it was such a scary situation i don't know that's like really the end of my story so my friend witnessed somebody get possessed she became very distant she got possessed she's okay now i don't think she was ever truly like exercised i want to say that she might have been i can't remember exactly eventually she kind of and we all kind of got away from that crowd, which I think was very, very good. I think that that particular crowd and just the things going on with it, like whenever you do drugs and stuff, I feel like that opens up your mind more to the option of being possessed. Your willpower and stuff just isn't as strong as whenever you are sober. So I think that that really had a part in it. And once we got away from those people, it's fun to see them sometimes but for that to be a constant in your life, it was just really draining. And I'm glad that we've parted ways, I guess. It's just for the best, I think. Thank you so much for watching my video. Thank you for getting my other spooky video from like last year to 300 views. I think that's so crazy. That's so exciting to me that possibly 300 people have seen it. Yeah, it's, it makes me so happy. But it's fun to tell these stories sometimes afterwards, whenever everything's okay. Thank you so much for watching my video. It means so much to me. And hopefully I will have some new videos out for you soon.